It was Friday night football. It was their homecoming game. And it was at the end of the game, the very last play. Cooper took a really hard hit. They just got back up and got back in formation. And that's when he, we know he took another hit. You know, his buddies got him up and said, come on, man, we just won the game. And they took about five steps and he collapsed. Life changed for everybody, not just us, but our whole, commu our whole community. He was injured playing football with a brain injury back in September of uh, 22 when he collapsed on the field. Took him in, found out it was a brain injury, and he went into surgery right away. Had two different surgeries during the time we were in ICU for four weeks. From there, we went to Tier in Houston for acute rehab, and it was an amazing facility, amazing place. So we spent five months in Houston, and he'd gotten down to 109 pounds. Like, he's six one, you know, and so he, got, he was just really sick. So we spent a lot of time at Tier, and then we left there and to get into outpatient therapy once the acute time was over. And we've been to four other facilities besides Tier um, in the past 11 months before coming here to Dr. Daigle. Throughout this time, I've kept hearing about Dr. Daigle. His name kept coming up. We were in ICU, because the first time I'd heard about him. I just looked, watched his Instagram page, and I'm like, this guy's a chiropractor. What is he, what is he gonna do for Cooper, you know? Which, now going back, this has been our first shop. So his name has just kept popping up throughout the last 11 months. And so I finally contacted one of the moms that I'd been following on Facebook, her daughter on Facebook. And she kind of told me the same thing. And so I immediately hung up with her and called Dr. Daigle's office. We've only been here about two or three days. And I'm like, we don't, I don't want to leave. Like, we need to keep this going. He makes screams, he makes noises, but he's never specifically made a sound, a specific noise on command. And when Dr. Daigle told him to say all the other day, and he said all, you know, in a different tone, a different way he's ever said it. And that was just like, we knew, like, we are. This is it. Cooper smiled for the first time over the weekend um, on his own, you know, without being towed. And that was something huge to see his smile again. We have been traveling. We've, been, we've lived in four cities in the past 11 months. This is the first time we're going to go home and stay. It's because we're going to take this protocol back with us and we believe in it. And he's allowing us to go home and that's huge too. Everywhere we went, the people are amazing. They're doing great work. But we weren't seeing, haven't seen any large strides or any huge, big improvements, maybe even fast enough, like what we're wanting to see. And, you know, those type of therapies I think are good for, you know, they've been good for other patients and other people, but it wasn't, hasn't been helping Cooper. The same activities with Cooper, just doing the same thing over and over again and not seeing any results. That's when we started like, you know, just looking outside the box. This traditional therapy is not working for us. And that's when we, you know, realize that we've got to do something different and try, you know, try another avenue for him. The way that we've just seen the results and just feel like I said, it's just spending time with him and him spending time with us and talking to us and explaining all these things and just his knowledge. And we, this is like he knows about the brain. That is something we haven't seen at all anywhere else. Anybody that knows about the brain and what the brain needs and just changing our whole philosophy of what Cooper's rehab should look like. I have constant Facebook messages, constant text message, phone calls, praying, praying, the community, the churches, the kids. They're, you know, they're still raising money for him at school and um, just trying to do whatever they can, you know, and um, to support us and just, just, just the school district, everybody's just been amazing and working on our behalf all the time. I always say, like, I have looked and to try to find a word bigger than thank you. I feel like it's not big enough. It doesn't mean enough for what I truly feel about them all. And um, if I was anywhere, I would have wanted to be in troop in our hometown, in our community, because there's nobody with more love than the people in that community. Our goals have definitely changed. Now it's just the simple things. It's the little things that just, you know, hearing his voice and just, you know, just seeing his smile, making his, you know, his movements and um, just knowing that we're going to get there one day. But definitely our goals have changed and become a lot more simpler than just seeing how big that is. But that's still our ultimate goal for Cooper is to be, have his independence back and his personality back and um, all the things that make him Cooper. The one thing that people will say about Cooper is his smile and his goofy laugh. He was just the most laid back, easygoing kid that was just happy to be there and just smiled all the time. This weekend when we saw him smile for the first time on his own because something was funny, that was huge. That, that was one of those just 
you know, tear breakers take you to your knees and just thank God for what is happening here. It's definitely a step in the right direction where we wanted to get for him to go, you know.